This is Dominique Wilkins. Hey, this is Sean Kemp. This is Gary Payton. Hey, this is Paul Gasol. NBA fans, what's up? This is Vince Carter here. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes. If you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean Davis. Hey, what's good, everybody? Welcome back to the Basketball Time Machine. It's time to talk some old school NBA. In today's episode, I want to talk about a player that I really, really loved back in the days. A player that unfortunately kind of got forgotten over the years. I'm, of course, talking about Latrell Sprewell. So in this video, we're going to take a look back at his incredible NBA career and evaluate how good he actually was. But before we get to that, let me ask you guys for a quick favor. Please do me a favor and subscribe to the channel and click the notifications bell so you always get a notification once I upload a new video. All right, enough said, let's dive right into today's episode. So where do we start? I would say let me take you back to the early 1990s to the college career of Latrell Sprewell. Latrell Sprewell, who was born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, played college ball for two different colleges. From 1988 to 1990 for Three Rivers and from 1990 to 1992 for Alabama. But in both colleges, it would be the same story. Latrell was playing well, but scouts did not pay attention. One of the reasons was that Sprewell's stats did not say anything about his overall skills. Since even in his senior year, Latrell was barely averaging about 17 points per game. Numbers did not tell you anything about his explosiveness, his aggressiveness, and what a great competitor he was. And of course, it was not saying anything about his great potential. So when Latrell declared for the NBA draft in 1992, there was a high chance that no team would select him. But there was one franchise who did pay attention to what Latrell did in college. And the rest, well, is history. With the 24th pick in the 1992 NBA draft, the Golden State Warriors select Latrell Sprewell from the University of Alabama. <laughs> is this a joke? There is no Latrell Sprewell. We couldn't figure out who he was. He comes into camp, he's Superman. This is like striking gold. So when the Golden State Warriors selected Latrell Sprewell, not only did nobody know who he was, but fans were pretty upset that Golden State had wasted their pick on this nobody. But it took Spree only a few games to prove that he belonged. Teaming up with Tim Hardaway, Chris Mullen, Billy Owens, and Sarunas Machuinis, Spree would be the perfect addition to the fast-paced and up-tempo playing style. He received 35 minutes as a rookie and was already entrusted with guarding the best wing player on the opposing team. Only one year later, he was already Golden State's best player and making the NBA All-Star team for the first time. And on that bright stage, he would show everybody what a great and sensational player he was. I think you saw Latrell Sprewell when he first made the All-Star team and he got a chance to match up with Jordan and you saw what a great player he was. I remember talking to Michael later and you know, he'd say to him, well, who are the toughest guys you ever had to play against? And he used to say, well now, Sprewell guards me as well as anybody. He was lightning quick. Coach used to put him in the game and says, just shut him down. Don't let him catch the ball. Don't let him touch the ball. And Spree was in people's jocks. The thing that probably makes Spree uh, most effective is his energy. Oh, he's a three-dimensional player. You know, he's a guy who can break you down. He can shoot the jump shot. You know, he can make passes. He's just real smooth and sleek with this game. In the next two years, Latrell turned into one of the best players in the NBA. A two-way player that could average 20 points on the one side and who would shut you down on the other side. His team, the Warriors, however, would have its ups and downs. Bad management decisions led to the Warriors breaking up their future. Latrell was frustrated but kept on working on his game and also would become one of the most popular players in the entire league. Hi, I'm Latrell Sprewell. I play guard for the Golden State Warriors. Kemp with another board. Look out! Sprewell diagnosed it perfectly, and he saves the ball in front of Nelly. Puts up a crazy shot that goes. Oh, brother! Latrell Sprewell! I'm one of those guys that 
tries to lead by example. Not polished, not smooth. Here goes Sprewell. Yeah. I guess everybody has their own way of uh, dunking. You know, I love to get a wide open fast break and just throw it down. That's like the greatest. He can do whatever he likes. Hardaway. Oh, Spreewell. What a move. Hardaway, Spreewell, touchdown. If I had to pick one thing, I'd just want to dunk on somebody. If he toes over to Spreewell. When you dunk on somebody, other guys, and they, they feel that energy too. And uh, he, he definitely carries over. When you're on fire from the perimeter, it really opens up things for you. When you're hitting them and you're in that zone, it's, uh, you know, it's like you can't be stopped. Before. Shot clock at three. Springwell. Oh, my. That really opens up the floor for you, too, because guys are running at you, and that way you can get past them. Springwell against Mashburn. It's amazing. I remember it like it was yesterday. It was the 1997 NBA All-Star Game. And by then I already knew Latrell Sprewell, but in that game he was simply unbelievable. Hey, and Latrell Sprewell. Six and a half remaining. Care business, like you know now. Now it should be pointed out as Sprewell. In the second half, one point away from the all Everything was going well for Spree, but then when his new head coach, PJ Calissimo, kept on yelling at Spree, in one practice it was too much for him to take and he attacked his coach. He choked him twice, got suspended for an entire season, and his career seemed to be over. But then out of the blue, the New York Knicks traded John Starks and Terry Cummings for him, and Spree got a new chance. The New York Knicks fans were very skeptical at first, but again, Sprewell won the fans over with his energetic style and games like this. And good defense from Allen Houston. And Allen has been very active on the defense the last two games. Sprewell spotting up. Knicks with a couple of three-pointers and a lead by three. Sprewell knocks it down. And the Knicks... Now have an 11 point lead. They've scored nine in a row. Richardson, that's a long three pointer. Good boxing out from Kirk Thomas. Breeze open. There's Harrington. Good recovery that time by the Clippers to get back. And Sprewell lines up the three and knocks it down. Knicks already. Four of six from downtown. Sprewell tries to create some space. Puts up the three. He looks like there, Clyde. Kirk Thomas knows Sprewell's in a bit of a groove. Doliak, Sprewell again, knocks down the three, Latrell Sprewell, now with 23. It's all what you were talking about, there's just no fluidity with these teams. Sprewell again, and Sprewell now six for six from downtown. He's a good bet to get it tonight, there's another one from three for three. Seven for seven from downtown, and the largest lead of the game for the Knicks. <laughs> Sprewell for three, puts her in. For eight from downtown. Now that ties an NBA history. Well, nine for nine. He winks at Allen Houston as he runs. Sprewell would be a vital part of the New York Knicks' success, but he would be a slightly different player. He was still explosive and he was still energetic, but he turned more into of a team player than a go-to guy who would demand the ball all the time. And I believe that this also had to do with the PJ Calissimo incident. Because Sprewell was playing with a chip on his shoulder and he wanted to prove to everybody that he was a good guy and he didn't want to step onto anybody's toes. But gone were the days where he would average like 25 points and so on. He would end his career while playing two seasons for the Minnesota Timberwolves, where he was still a solid player, but far away from an all-star. So how good was Latrell Sprewell in my opinion? Well, I honestly gotta say, if it wasn't for that PJ Calissimo incident, I really believe that he would be a Hall of Famer by now. Because at that point, his career was really skyrocketing, and he was about to become one of the best players in the entire NBA, but well, what can you do? Everything turned out the way it did. But to me, still, I believe he was one of the best players of his generation. All right, you guys, that was it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed the content. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and click on that notifications button. And I'll see you next time on the Basketball Time Machine. Another Hawks turnover. Sprewell. Knicks take the lead. Who's it back? Sprewell's open. We'll take the three instead. Drives and hits.
Camby. He cannot pick up his third foul. Coming in front for the steal is Freeway. He's gone. 